Alright, first we're going to start out with a shout out to my friend Spiny. Spiny, look, I found your house out there in the middle of the wilderness. Okay, back to the real stuff. Let's start out with opening a Windows File Explorer window. It's going to by default open in libraries. Um, you can dump libraries in Windows 7. You can't dump it in Windows 8, unfortunately, because it messes with your backgrounds, your login screen, your metro screen. It would be nice if you could dump it because it's just an annoying folder you don't need. You're going to see admin and maybe your hard drives. A lot of things will be missing here until you change the view settings. So under Windows 7, you go up to the top and hit Tools and Options. If you don't see Tools or you don't see these tabs in Windows 7 or 8, hit your Alt key. That will bring them up. For Windows 8, we go over to View. Then we go over to Options. And you go to Change Folder and Search Options. Windows 7, it will be Tools, Options, Change Folder Views, I believe. Okay, then you can check this box to keep the annoying favorites folder there or uncheck it. Thank God, get rid of it. Check this box to show all folders. Now it's going to show all your folders. Then you're going to go to View. And on View, always show menus. We'll keep your menus on top if you use them a lot. I do, so I leave it up there. Um, you can check Show Hidden Folders, but it'll show a lot of desktop I INI and a lot of INI folders all over the place that will annoy you. So only check that if you're looking for a hidden folder or trying to get rid of a virus. Next, uncheck these two boxes. Hide empty drives. Hide extensions for known file types. That way you'll be able to see the file extension on all your folders. Whether it's EXE or it's JPEG or it's PNG, you'll see the extension. Then click OK, and we're done with that. Now we're going to have to do a little file organization. Um, your documents, all of your folders here are your personal folders that you're going to want backed up. We're going to want to move those to a new partition. Unfortunately, they're all in different places, so you'd have to go to each one and move each file individually to the new place, or save some time, drag and drop them into the documents folder. So you just left click on that, and drag it down, and drop it in the documents folder. Now your documents will probably be named my documents, my pictures, my music, my scans, my everything. I don't know why they still use that my thing. And let's slap Apple too with their I thing. Um, I take all the my off on the Apple. I take all the I off because I only need to do the alphabet once. Thank you very much. Once you have everything moved into your documents folder, we're going to leave that for right now. Let's go down and click on computer. It's going to show you all your partitions or hard drives on the right hand side. I have uh, way too many part dri hard drives, obviously. Normally, this will not be the operating system name, but C is your primary drive. You may already have two partitions, C and D or C and E. You can change the drive letter under computer management in Windows 8 pretty easy to get to Windows 7 administrative tools hopefully the second partition is already D so typically your largest partition is your operating system for who knows whatever reason that is we're going to resize that somewhere around 100 to 120 gigs mine is a single drive an SSD so it's already at 111 and the reason you do this is you're going to move all your personal files off the operating system drive so that they're on a separate drive or a separate partition. Anything goes wrong with the operating system, you get hijacked, you get a virus, you've used Google one too many times, you're using Google Chrome, <laughs> and you definitely got hijacked. Then you can just wipe out the OS and your documents, your personal stuff, your pictures, your folders, your music, none of that's changed. All right, we're gonna change that a little bit down the road. First we're going to go with installing Paragon Hard Disk Manager. So typically when I download things from the internet I save a key and text file. I just copy and paste their information they give me so that I can put the key in. I've already put in the key in and I'm past that window but you would just run the file that you get and then you'll come up with this window and it's pretty easy. Next there's no tricky hidden stuff there except the terms. Next and then you can change your username if you'd like and the username and then anyone who uses a computer or just for you if you've got multiple people using it then next you don't need to change anything here you don't need to change any settings then next then install 
It installs in just a couple of seconds. Typically you don't need to restart the computer when it does install. And you hit finish. One good thing about Paragon is you can download a trial for 30 days and the trial version is 100% functional. It's not like most trial versions where it asks you to buy it and no you can't do this, no you can't do that, no that doesn't work, you've got to buy that too. It actually is functional. So it'll leave an icon on your desktop. Typically I take most of the icons off my desktop and move them up here to the star dock because it's a little cleaner and I don't like things on my desktop but we'll leave it there for right now. So then once that's up there you just click on that it'll open it up. Now it, this only happens the very first time you open it. You see you've got all these choices here very confusing. Just hit open advanced interface and that's going to take you to showing you all your drives and your partitions. Now you can do all this in Windows or you can create a boot CD and do it through the boot CD. When you're doing it in Windows it's going to ask you to restart if you're resizing your primary drive and then you just say well, it'll say it can't do it would you like to restart you say yes so any drive you want to change the size on you right click on it and I already have a drive down here to mess with I believe somewhere there it is my test drive you right click on that drive and you go to move or resize then you click that and you choose the size. Now this drive is only 61 gigs, so let's pretend that it's 600. So you would just change this number to 100 or 1110, which I can't do because this drive is not big enough. So we're going to just go to 11. And then you just click in the bottom box, and that's going to be free space after the drive. And that's going to be your secondary drive or your D drive. Then you just say yes. Now you see how you have this, you'll have, this will be showing up here on yours. Your Windows 8 drive will be cut down to 120 megs. The remainder will be 500. If you have a second drive, it's not a problem. You already have it. So you can just right click on this and say create partition and new volume name, documents. And then you can give it a drive letter of D if it's available. If it's not available, just click None. Say Yes. Now after you've done that, you have to go up here and say Apply. And when you go to Apply, it'll ask you this. You say Yes. It takes a couple of seconds on a drive that's empty and a drive that's not being used. If the drive is being used, this window is going to pop up and then it's going to tell you that it can't do it. See right there. Restart the computer or retry. I can disconnect that drive in Windows and work on any of the other drives in Windows except for the operating system. You're going to see this. So if you're doing a Windows partition in Windows, just click Restart the Computer. It'll restart the computer and it'll do the drive work um, before Windows starts up. But keep in mind, make sure your stuff is backed up. Back up, back up, back up, back up, and back up again. Okay, so I'm going to say Cancel and I'm going to say Close because I don't really need to change that drive. Now we're going to jump on to making an image backup because you've already resized your drive and you've restarted your drive and you're going to make an image of this drive. So you just go to Smart Backup. It's pretty easy to do. You go to Next. It's going to say ask you where you want to back it up. Disks or Partitions. Then you choose what you back up. Normally I do master boot record, system reserved, and then I know that that's my primary partition because I've renamed it, and that. It goes to next, ask you where you want to save it, and you choose a place to save it on any of your drives. Um, we'll just click the documents folder. I have a different folder, obviously, backup and backup. And then you name it something so you know what it is, like win 8 dash 214 so that you know that it was done on February 14th, 2014. Then you go next. Then you go next again. There's nothing you have to put there. Back up now. It can do backups with Windows running. You don't need to restart. Nothing special. And you say finish. And anytime it's finished, you got to hit the green arrow. And it goes about the same for restore. Once you've made a backup, you can just go to restore next it's going to have the archive already in there 
but since I didn't complete the backup, the archive's not listed. But if you've already created one, the archive will be there. And then it's next. You choose what you're going to back up. One's going to be your little reserved folder first. And you go next, next, finish. Then the next one, I guess we better put one in there just so people can see how that works, huh? You add the archive. So you would go here, and then you would go next. This takes a couple of seconds for it to read the archive. And once it's got the archive read, then hopefully I've clicked the right thing, it's going to tell you what you're going to back up. So you would say system reserve first, and then next, and you would say which drive you're going to put it on. And it would be this little tiny one there. So it's, this is going to be a big empty drive for you right now because you resized it. And you click on that on the system reserved. And next. And then next. And then finish. Then you go back up to restore again. And you go through the same thing. And you have the same archive. But that archive will already be there if you've created it in Paragon. Um, I've created it, but I've uninstalled Paragon so I can walk through the install process. And if you go there the next time, you're going to restore it to this one, whatever your operating system is. You go there and that's going to be the larger partition, the 100 or 110 gig partition. And again, this is only if you're restoring because something's gone wrong. And this isn't going to be like a send, uh, Windows Restore or Restore Point. This is an actual picture image of when your software was working perfectly. You take that image, you save it, then you can go back and completely restore that image and it'll be exactly how it was that day. And no, it doesn't mess with Windows activation. You don't have any problems. Get sort of all that stuff you normally have. And so then you would go next and next, change the size if you want, finish. We're gonna cancel everything because we're not obviously gonna apply any of the changes to my drive. And we're gonna close this down. And it says, Counseling All Projects. Yes, now we've got our image back up. We've got our drive resized. Now let's get our documents moved over someplace where it can actually be backed up and be safe. So we're going to go back to our Windows Explorer folder. We're going to right-click on your Documents folder. Remember earlier in the video, we put all of these folders in there. So they're all in one place now. We're going to go to Properties. Then we're going to go to Location. The location is probably going to say C, Users, App, Data, Program, something or other back there. Very simple. If there's one user on the computer, just switch this to your new partition that you just made um, called D. And then just switch it to D Documents. Click OK. It will ask you, would you like to create the folder? It doesn't exist. You say yes. Then it will ask you, would you like to move all the folders to the new location? You say yes. Now all your folders are on the new partition that you created. Now anytime you have to restore an image or you have to do any work on your operating system, your personal files are untouched, unchanged, and not lost. But like I said, always keep a backup. Thank you very much for watching.